Good evening. Good to, good to see y'all this week. Um, welcome to our Wednesday night devotional. Uh, here we are, months and months and months still into uh, doing it this way, but we do what we got to do. But, but uh, good evening, and I uh, have some words written down here for us and a few uh passage uh, passage of scripture we'll read a little later on but uh before we uh before i do that i want to uh to uh, us to remember our, our 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 sick our hospitalized our the people that are mourning the loss of, of loved ones uh this people that has been diagnosed with this virus that's affecting so many people and has us doing strange things that we don't normally do but uh, uh and just to pray for uh just to pray for all of these that uh, need prayer uh, i don't have a list of names if you're watching right now and listening you thinking of someone right now so the lord knows their hearts and he'll he will uh, visit these people as uh, as we uh go in prayer right now and uh, pray for these let's go to our Lord in prayer Father God Jesus Christ the Son and the Holy Spirit Lord we just thank you for this day Lord uh, if we fail if we fail to do so Lord uh, forgive us for not uh, offering thanks and thanksgiving every day uh, every day of our life lord truthfully we get caught up and we uh we 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 forget forgive us lord when we do lord there's a lot of uh, hurting folks right now and lord without calling their names you know who they are because you've already been there you're already you're already giving peace where where uh, there's no other peace in this world. And Lord, uh, that's, that's good enough. Lord, it, it's really all we have is you and you're indwelling us and, we, and us and you. Lord, uh, just be with me the rest of this evening. And Lord, uh, that the words that I speak are words that you've given me to speak. And Lord, I'll give you all the glory for it. Lord, once again, thank you for this day. And thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. It's in his name I pray. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me get a sip of this water here. Well, uh, this Wednesday night devotional time, there's I'm gonna read a I'm gonna read a passage of scripture a little bit later, and as soon as I as soon as I read it, you're gonna automatically recognize it from scripture from uh, the book of Isaiah. They're almost they're almost word for word the same, except and we touch we may uh, we'll touch on a little bit when we get to it. Jesus says it almost word for word, except he lives. He leaves out the last sentence, and uh, I guess it's he, he done it for a reason. There'll be a time for it, and uh, that's I, that's what I believe. So, but anyway, th this devotional that I want to share with y'all tonight kind of it touches on some things. Uh, about all about all this different world we're living in right now i know just as soon as i got here to sit down to do this nikki was sitting this computer up and and told me that uh, one of our one of our brothers here at church a friend i've known all my life is uh we contracted or diagnosed with the virus and it seems like there's some every day and Lord, it's just crazy times. Uh, have to do everything different, and 
Uh, to say it doesn't affect us, I just don't believe we're being truthful with ourselves. And that is some of what I wrote down here. And there's a lot of other things that we'll get to, but let's go ahead and uh, the the scripture. I'll I'll read it when when I get to it. So I'm just gonna start out this way. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving Day, a time for gathering with family, friends, relatives that you might see just once a year. A time to gather around a table or tables filled with everything from turkey and ham, homemade dressing, every side dish and salad you can imagine, along with coconut cake, pecan pie, banana pudding, and everything else for a sweet tooth. I almost feel like doing like Grandpa John's <laughs> he's still an e haul right there, but but anyway. Giving thanks to our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the Holy Spirit that indwells us. Not just for tomorrow, before we sit down, but for every day leading up to tomorrow and every day to follow. Now it's easy for the turkey, God rest his soul to steal the day, for he sits in the middle of the table. With everyone gathered around, mouth watering, fort ready, waiting on the amen, it's true, isn't it? Remember sincere thanks tomorrow. The only thing that could dampen this gathering is the gathering. Reality just reared his ugly head. Life, the way of life today as we know it in the now of a pandemic, has us in its grip, or so it seems. All the questions arise. Where will we gather? Who will be there? Will there be enough room? Will we be safe? All legitimate questions, and for good reason. To say this has been a difficult year on the eve of Thanksgiving of 2020, well, that might be an understatement. Thanksgiving, as we all know, marks the beginning of what we call the holiday season. The leftover turkey in the fridge hasn't even disappeared yet, and the Christmas decorations are going up. Christmas shopping has begun. Shoot, Santa Claus and his elves are already at the mall. And it just dawned on me, will this be the first time I've seen Santa Claus wearing a mask? This crazy year, these crazy times give new meaning to the word Grinch. It's just too easy to think of all the negatives associated with this year. Pandemics, elections, social unrest, strife and conflict and the unrest we've shared together here at church there's one thing about this old world it does not discriminate on who it presses down on it presses down on the unbeliever and the believer the unjust and the just her weight upon our soldier shoulders sometimes seems like an eternity all the while getting a little dimmer Where's joy? Am I wrong to feel this way? Mind you, not all the time, but at times when my weaknesses get the best of me. Have you ever felt this way also? Oh, I know we don't like to admit it. Is it because we're afraid we might look weak among each other? Opting for a more natural, worldly approach, like keep a stiff upper lip, or just pick yourself up by your bootstraps and trudge forward. I must confess, these haven't worked for me. Have they worked for you? Just as I was writing down these words, the Spirit of Christ reminded me of the Apostles' words. Here's my translation. I'm at my best when my weakness is at its greatest. It sounds like a mystery, doesn't it? 
But the apostle through Christ and Christ's spirit unlocked the mystery. It's so overlooked by daily living, by daily obstacles, by stumbling and tripping over and over much of the time, we miss the most important act of worship we have to offer. This act is humility, humbleness, a humble heart. Out of all the things in this world, this is the greatest gift we have to offer God, to Christ our Lord. Right now, I bet someone is thinking or saying, you're wrong, Wendell. Love is the greatest gift we, ha gift we have to offer. Brothers and sisters, without a humble heart, without, humi without humility, there is a heartfelt love. This is the only way to unlock the mystery to joy. While weakness seems to overtake us, I'll say this one more thing about joy. Humility, a humble heart, and treatment of others is God and Christ's only wish, or better yet, commandments for any believer. This is the skeleton key for unlocking all mystery. I'll go farther and say this is the reason Christ's words in Matthew 22 Chapter 22, verses 37 through 40 were written. Once again, I ask one last time, where's joy? Where's joy today? Joy is where it's always been, in Christ Jesus. Now, I bet by now some of you are saying to yourself, Good gosh, Wendell, it ain't that bad. And you got that right, it ain't that bad. Let me explain. About a week ago, the words, good news kept coming to my heart and to my head. And the Spirit of Christ Jesus said, enough is enough. Hear my words. Read them. Our Scripture reading tonight will come from uh, Luke's Gospel, chap chapter 4, uh, verses 18 and 19. No, I'm going to say 17 through 19. When you hear this, you're, going, you're automatically going to remember this. It's, uh, some, some would uh, call this Christ, uh, uh, proclamation of his commission for coming to this world. I know a lot of times the Christ, usually we talk about the first things we really hear from Christ, uh, I mean, publicly, is the, uh, I guess it's easy to do, the Sermon on the Mount. But th this, this scripture here is really what would be Christ's coming out party, if you want to put it that way. But anyway, here it is. Luke's, go Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, 17 through 19. And he stood up to read the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now, some people may... So when yeah, he's talking about the year of the Lord's favor, he's talking about the year of Jubilee. I understand all that. And uh, but I thought about this today. And sometimes do we make this mistake? 
Yeah, Wendell, but that's that's not what he's talking about. This he's talking about something else. And we 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 ourselves claim this book I'm holding right here is a it's it's a living. It it lives. Well, I go, I, I believe that. I know it, uh, a lot of people listening to me believe this book is it's living. It grows with us, grow, our growth. If that's the case, then this passage of Scripture matches up with the words I'm fixing to read. These are the words recorded in Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 2. 700 years before Christ's birth into our world, this same world that presses down today. I have to be honest with you. I need these words today, don't you? To preach good news to the poor. For today I'm poor in spirit. Are you? Today I feel like a prisoner longing for freedom from all the chaos around me. Don't you? All the turmoil this year has clouded my vision. I want to see again. Don't you? The crazy times with their heavy chains have bound me up where I feel like I can't move. Have you ever felt this way too? It's time even in these strange days to hear Christ's words. Christ's good news and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. It's time to look back no more. It's time to proclaim. It's time to preach good news. The day is coming when we will embrace one another without fear. The day is coming when we will care more for each other than we care for ourselves. The day is coming when truth, Christ's truth, drowns out all noise of the day, the noise that steals our joy. It's time to live in the Lord's favor. Anyone who is in my Sunday school class know I love to read the definition of words. Sometimes we... We hear a word, that, oh, yeah, I know the definition of that. But it doesn't hurt to go back and read them. And sometimes let it soak in a little bit. Here are some definitions for favor. A helpful or considerate act. The attitude of friendliness. A token of love or remembrance to benefit, to give advantage, to support, to approve, to treat with special care, beneficial, building up hope or confidence, approving, promising. Now we have to feel good about our Lord's favor today, tomorrow, and the rest of the year. So go have a happy Thanksgiving. Let us hang our greens. Let us celebrate Christ's birth and welcome a new year, a year of the Lord's favor. Now that, brothers and sisters, is good news. Thank you, Lord. To Christ all glory. Amen. Let's cl close with a word of prayer. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord, thank you for your words of encouragement in a time when we need encouragement. Lord, to uh, make us remember what we're here in this world for. Lord, let us, let, us, let us all have more humility. Lord, give us 
the strength to have a more humbleness and a humble heart about us. For where a humble heart is, joy is right beside. Where a humble, a humble heart and joy are, you are. And we're all, we're the, we all are together. Our treatment of others is like the words in Matthew. Without, without those three, there's not real love. There's not enough love for our Father and you, and there's surely not enough love for our neighbor. Lord, uh, I pray for our Thanksgiving time together. Lord, I pray for this time that uh, we've shared here tonight. Lord, thank you for uh, thank you for your presence in all of our lives. Once again, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for all you do. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen.